Hi, welcome to the ECAM channel. This is Yuan. Today, Professor Gogozzi will share his insights and expertise on this important topic, suggestions for publications. I hope this video can give you some insights to help your work publish more effectively. Let's go to the video. What are some key considerations for selecting a proper journal to submit your research manuscript to? Well, one of the things is, um, if you read papers and assume you do, and at least a paper a day, hopefully more, you know where papers on the subject of your research are published. And you should consider journals that publish work in your field. Uh, however, a question often comes after that. Which journal? Is this like a most uh, exclusive journal, for example, uh, Nature Energy or Joel? Or it is very selective journal like Advanced Energy Materials uh, or uh, something like that. Or it should be a journal uh, like, say, Electrochemica Acta, which publishes a large number of papers uh, uh, and uh, somewhat, uh, has somewhat lower selectivity here. And here I would say it's very difficult for, for my students and postdocs to point decide. Everyone wants to publish in nature science, but not every uh, project produces results worth of there. Talk to your advisor, I would say. Your advisor will typically give you an advice where the paper can fit. And of course, try to exercise your judgment. Be objective looking at your results. If you discover the new material, if you developed a, a new type of battery or found a new mechanism of electrochemical energy storage, this is definitely a paper with the potential to be published in science or nature. Assuming, of course, you also write properly and put manuscript in the right shape. But if you have tested a material which has been tested by a few thousand people before you, like graphene, and you have uh, decent electrochemical behavior, but it's just a bit better than uh, the one reported in a hundred of other papers, then maybe it should go to mm -hmm. an archive server or a somewhat lower profile journal. But you still need to find what is new and different in your paper. And depending on the increment, it will go to the very best journal in the world. Or it may be a part of your PhD thesis, but appear not to be worth of writing a paper. Mm, that's Thank a very you so good much. Point. Yeah, that's very useful. Um, when people get the reviewer comments, some of them they don't agree with, or some people even requires to do extra experiment that they don't want to do. How do you navigate and respond to reviewer comments effectively? Well, first of all, keep in mind, reviewers are humans like you and me and Yuan and John. They can be right, they can be wrong. Good journals typically bring higher quality, more experienced, let's put this way, scientists as reviewers. And reviewers, good reviewers, try to help you to improve your paper. And still, they may be wrong. You may disagree with them. They may have wishful thinking that you can conduct a hundred of other experiments and you just finish your thesis, you found a new job, and you have even no opportunity to finish, produce, conduct more experiments here. So what you do, first you look at any review in a positive way, because by default you need to assume that reviewer try to help you improve your work. And this is what great majority of reviewers do. Then you find, try to find what they disagree with and work on your paper to improve what can be improved addressed. And if there are questions you disagree or some extra work you just cannot do or don't think it's reasonable because the paper will swell uh, enormously here, you write a polite answer. But never write anything insulting, 
Never be aggressive in your responses to reviewers here. Just provide a polite response explaining why you disagree. And if you feel that one of the reviewers is really biased or totally wrong, this happens unfortunately, you can separately write to the editor that based on this, this fact, you believe this reviewer doesn't have an expertise or is biased against this work for whatever reason. And you can always ask the editor not to consider this review or send your paper for adjudication review. Let me tell you a story. The first paper reporting on Maxin synthesis bounced from a couple of journals. And when it went for review in advanced materials, it received three lawworm reviews with a number of comments. Some of them we agreed with and approved the paper. Some of them we disagree. But reviewers did not recommend paper for publication. But we knew it was very important. We were very convinced that it was the beginning of a new family of materials. We asked for adjudication review. The paper went for adjudication review and the reviewer wrote virtually like a one short paragraph review telling that this paper reports a new two-dimensional material, possibly opening a new family of material, and this is sufficient reason to publish it in a high-impact journal like Advanced Materials. Mm -hmm. The paper was published, has been now for a long time, the most accessed, most cited article, and the rest is the history. So if you know your results are important, you will get through, your work will be published. Not in this journal, then in another journal here. But again, consider review as your help and your way to make your paper better. Yes. Mm -hmm. you. Yes, yeah. also never, never give up. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> yes. absolutely. If you believe in your work, you will uh, get it published and people will appreciate it. It's really important. Yeah. 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 I think the um, the last two questions we have kind of touch on similar topics is up on the form of publications like open access uh, publica uh, publication is a more popular form now, and there are also like archive preprints on the internet or even <coughs> data papers or people are envisioning I know negative results journals things like that. So, uh, what's your opinions on these like different forms of publishing? This is actually a question which is very difficult for me to answer in brief. Let me refer you to a recent editorial that I wrote and it got published in a Springer journal, Graphene and 2D Materials. Uh, this article deals exactly with the issue of open access and pay to publish. In brief, in my opinion, the current system is unsustainable and spinning out of control. There are numerous open access journals appearing, emerging. Enormous amount of money goes into paying for publications that should go into research. And while I think sharing information openly is good, it accelerate uh, progress, uh, scientific discovery, when people can get access to publications, they can uh, work faster, more efficiently. On the other hand, why authors should pay for publishing? If someone uh, grows crop, uh, corn, you don't expect a farmer to pay to people who consume, who eat corn or beef. You expect that consumers pay. So people who conduct research, they put their time, effort, life. You may be as a PhD student putting a year or two of your life to produce a paper. If this good work, someone who wants to consume your product should pay for it. Not you, right? This is a system that doesn't make sense to me. And I do appreciate the fact that publishing a paper cost money. Editors, publishers, journals, paper, distribution, this is expensive. And more selective journal, fewer paper journal publishers, more cost is small per paper. But this is definitely a system that should be supported by the government, 
by institutions and by consumers. So if someone here in the US uh, produces uh, a paper, why should someone else elsewhere get it for free if someone invested into research? Someone else who wants to consume product research, in my opinion, should be the one paying. This is a capitalist system. And a communism in publishing is great, but we know what were the consequences of communism and economics, and unfortunately I'm afraid with publication it will be a similar failure. So again, not all beautiful ideas are practical in realization and work here. So my feeling is that in the future, we will have more and more work published in archives, open access, very easy to edit. But we need to change the system in academia, how we evaluate research done. Because paper published in archive may not necessarily be lower quality than paper published in peer-reviewed journal. But if there are not enough peer reviewers to cover and do proper peer review, mm -hmm. it means that lots of journals publish papers that are called peer reviewed, but they are not really have been reviewed. It only makes a wrong impression, but they charge money. And I think money should go into research. We should have more open access publishing, which will be archiving papers mm -hmm. and selected most important work, which has been peer reviewed, approved, and really is of value for the research community, this is a work that should go into a limited number of journals. At least this is my position regarding the publication system. No, it yeah. makes sense. I appreciate your perspective because yeah. as a young scientist, we just we barely know anything about mm. uh, things above exactly. submitting. Thank you for journals. your voice. Well, that's where you learn. Uh, <laughs> coming to university, talking to more senior professors. And again, <laughs> feel free, agree or disagree with everything I uh, have said to you. Uh, because again, I shared my opinion and you need to be critical. Does it matter who is talking to you, uh, whose work you read, whether it's scientific paper of again, famous scientist, Nobel Prize winner, or opinion uh, of a senior professor, uh, keep in mind that uh, we all make mistakes. We are humans, just like yourself. So be critical, always. As a scientist, you need to take everything critically. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. Appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed the video today. In the next video, Professor Gogosi will provide some thought and vision on electrochemical applications. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The videos in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.